worship the Lord with us. Let's give Him all praise and glory. Let's stand to our feet. Father God, as we come into Your presence, Lord. Oh Lord, we give You everything. We give You from our desires to our needs. Lord, even the problems, we give You everything, Lord. And Jesus, You are welcome here. Welcome here amongst us, Lord. And have your way we worship you we praise you hallelujah
King, you sing. His love endures forever. For his good is above all things. You sing. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Stretched arms. His love endures forever. For the life that's been, that's been reborn. You sing. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Yeah. Forever God is faithful. To the setting sun, you sing. Love endures forever. By the grace of God, we will carry on. You sing. Love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Jesus, let's put our hands together for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. His love endureth forever. His love endureth forever. His love endureth forever. His love endureth forever. His love endureth. His love endureth forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Oh, he's so worthy of praise. 
Lord, you're so worthy of praise. Oh Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you everything that we have is yours, Jesus. Forever and ever and ever, you are our God and King. There is none like you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. We've got so much to be thankful for. Thank you, Jesus.
this morning.
just the church.
exalt thee, Lord. Thank you for all your goodness to us, Lord. Truly, you are a good God. And I open my heart and I pray that we will all open our hearts to the word of the Lord and to the presence of the Holy Spirit and that you will do a profound work in this church today. Amen. You may be seated. Now we, we're so glad you here this morning because uh, <coughs> we're so glad you here this morning because I know it's cold and they were saying it was going to rain heavily but that rain is yet to come. Anyway, um, If you're a first-time visitor here, we especially want to welcome you. We're, we're a giving church. We believe given it shall be given unto you. And we have next door here, we have a restaurant with one of the best chefs in, in the city, if not the nation, and uh, a beautiful restaurant. And we want to bless you. It's a cold day. We'd like to give you a nice hot cup of coffee or or uh, uh, drinking chocolate, or, or tea, or chai, or whatever you would like to get. Amen? And it's, and it's free. All you have to do is tell us, you're a first-time visitor, and our uh, ushers are going to come and give you a little pamphlet, and, uh, and you fill that pamphlet in, you get, get a free cup of coffee. I don't know how many of you, I wouldn't mind a cup of coffee right now. Amen. So, if you're a visitor, allow us to bless you. Put your hand up and we'll give you that. There's a hand over there. Anybody else? Just raise your hand. There's another hand over there. Anybody in this group here? Anybody over here? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, 
We have some special announcements to make this morning uh, that I need you to listen to very carefully. On the, uh, on the, 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 the 4th of July, which is, well, what, that's two Thursdays time, we are going to be having uh, the man that started Burn 24 worldwide. He, uh, Burn 24 is where a city get together and all the bands come together and they worship for 24 hours nonstop right through the night. And this has taken off over the, over the whole world and, um, and uh, uh, it costs money to bring uh, people in. As you can imagine, the tragedy is our, our dollar is 15 dollars to Come and sit in the front row, sister. There's lots of space there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Um, as I was saying, uh, this guy, he also, some of you might have heard, who's heard of the Bethel Church in Redding, California? Raise your hand. Uh, hallelujah. Quite a lot. Some of you haven't. It's becoming one of the famous churches in the world. He's on the ministry staff there. Plus, how many of you have heard of Jesus Culture, the, the music group? Raise your hand right up so I can see. Now, this guy writes songs for Jesus Culture. He's, uh, he's in the music department of Jesus Culture, and he's coming right here to this church. And um, uh, before anybody gets a hiccup or something, we, it's costing us 27,000 rands. So we're selling tickets for that night of 50 rand a ticket. And, uh, and, and I want you to buy a ticket for two reasons, because I know you're going to be blessed. And secondly, they're going to be selling these tickets in churches across the whole city. And I'd hate for all the other churches to come in and our church doesn't get blessed. And it's only 50 rand. How many of you have ever been to a show of any sort in this city and only paid 50 rand? We always try and keep it down. We want to make it accessible to everybody. And uh, in the foyer, here are the tickets, in the foyer and at the bookshop we have tickets and you can buy your tickets there for 50 rand. And... Um, uh, uh, it will be available next Sunday, but by then we might have sold out. I also want to ask every worker, every cell leader that's here, would you take 10 tickets on, what do they call it, consignment? I need every cell leader to try to sell 10 tickets. Consignment means you take, uh, you take 10 tickets, and you sell them, and what you don't sell, you bring back. So you're under no pressure. I need, I need at least, we got a hundred and, we got nearly 170 cells. I need a hundred of them to do their part, and we'll sell a thousand tickets, and we'll have a revival in this place. I want every cell leader to stand, please. Every cell leader that's in church, stand up, please. I obviously need to check out where the cell leaders are. I would like you, please, to take 10 tickets. Now, I'm going to do you a favor. Everybody who takes 10 tickets and sells all 10, you can take an 11th, and that's for you for free. Aren't you glad you're a cell leader? Amen. Praise God. Please get them. You may be seated. Get them in the foyer. Amen. All right, I don't want to waste any time. Uh, uh, I would like you to put uh, John 14, 27 on the overhead, please. John 14, 27. Just give them a chance to find that, John 10, 14, 27.
John's going to come. <laughs> there you go. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. Isn't that wonderful? The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Could you give me the King James Version? I know some people say it's old-fashioned, but give me the King James Version, please. All right. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Peace is a wonderful, wonderful attribute because people that are in a battle and at peace know they're going to win. Is there anybody here who says, I know I'm going to win? All right. I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. I've often thought about that. You know how the world gives. He gives because he wants something back. But he said, I'm not giving you a, a like that. I'm giving you without finding fault. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In other words, our heart mustn't be troubled and we mustn't be afraid. Now let me speak to everybody here, but especially the business people, the salesmen, the, uh, 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 or if you're worried that you might be retrenched. The Bible doesn't say, I, I, the Lord, won't let your heart be troubled. He said, let not. Who do you think he's talking to? You and me. Amen. I want to tell you the secret of blessing is for you to say, I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. Amen? Amen. Let not, let me re re rephrase it. Don't allow your heart to be troubled. I've given you peace. Don't allow your heart to be afraid. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're not allowed to be troubled. Tell them. And tell them again, you're not allowed to be afraid. And who must do something about it? Say me. Me, me, me. My name is Jimmy. Amen. Me, I, hallelujah. Raise your hand and say this with me. By the grace of God, I have his peace. I'm going to win. I will not allow the devil to trouble me. For circumstances to make me afraid, I have the peace of God. Yes, why don't you give the Lord a big hand here this morning? Now, how does this fit in with our, um, with our giving? You know what? We look at our few rands on us and we think, oh, God, I, 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 have I got enough petrol money? Have I got enough food money? Can I pay this bill and that bill? The Bible says don't let your heart be troubled. Give to the Lord because God is going to look after you. That was reasonable but not good. God, don't allow your heart to be troubled because God's on your side. Amen. God is for you. You say, well, pastor, I've been going through a battle. Yeah, well, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him or her out of them all. So I can't go under for going over. Lord Jesus, help me not to be afraid. Help me not to see the negatives and get afraid. Help me, Lord, to walk in the peace you gave me. Help me to know, and I'm going to bless your work this morning because I trust you to bless me. Amen. Anybody can say amen to that prayer? Amen. And we're going to receive the offering right now. Amen. Are you ready to receive the offering right now? Can we go ahead with the can we go ahead with the announcements, please?
Give me sound, please. Here's the guy that we're going to hear right in our church. Look at that crowd. We're going to have a crowd Thursday, the 4th of July. Thanks, man. Word of Faith Christian Center acts as a gateway that brings Jesus to our city, Africa, and the world. We believe that God has made Port Elizabeth a gateway to heaven. Today at Word of Faith. He is a necessary part of our lives. This little bundle over here gets me into my car, it gets me into my house and it gets me into my office. But the thing with keys, it's limited to only one door. I can't use this key to get into your front door. If you had a master key, a master key allows you access to multiple doors, to multiple locks. But the thing with a master key, it's also limited. It doesn't open up every door. I want to teach you about the key of keys. Come join me, Madge Blichner, 23rd of June at the 5 p.m. service as we find out how to hear God's voice through using the Word of God. You and I can have access to the key of keys. Is your month over before it started? Have you been overlooked for promotions or increases? Is it possible that you are the target of a spirit that is stealing your money? Pastor Matthew Cullis and I will teach on how you can break the power of the spirits that are stealing your money. Come break into the next level of your financial victory. Sunday, 23 of June at 7 p.m. God has called us to disciple nations. Find out how you can lead people into everything God has called them to be today at 5 p.m. in the chapel. This week at Word of Faith. Is your child between 6 and 13 years old? Our Kingdom Kids Holiday Club kicks off tomorrow morning. At 30 Rand a day or 120 Rand for the week, your child will receive a daily snack pack and a workbook. This Tuesday, we are praying for our Make a Mark Sunday on 28 July, our holiday club this week, and our upcoming concerts with Roar and Alison Gooch on 30 June and Bethel worship leader Sean Feucht and his band on the 4th of July. Join us as we pray. Pray and fast for a move of God at these events. This Wednesday at 7 p.m., Word of Faith favorite Pearl Coupe will be speaking at our Girlfriends Evening. Girlfriends, expect something sweet and delicious at the door and remember to bring something for our Hub of Hope gift bags. Check out our Arise Girlfriends Facebook page or follow us on Instagram for more information. Unbreakable Marriage, our four-week series for married couples, is coming up this Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. The cost is 180 rand per couple for all four sessions and includes refreshments. Upcoming events. Bring those you know are suffering with sickness and pain in their bodies to our healing crusade with Pastor Ronnie Sampson on Saturday, 6 June at 10 a.m. in the chapel. Pastors and prophets Stephen and Elise Puerta will be presenting the Hearing God's Voice seminar on Saturday, 13 July from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The cost is 160 rand and includes a manual and a light lunch. Contact Michelle on 84 800 to register today. Now you can purchase silver Havila jewelry from our bookshop. The profit made from these items will go toward non-profit organization Project Hope. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up on the latest messages and events. Follow us on Instagram. Like our Facebook page and remember to download the latest Connect outline from our website.
No matter what your background, we trust that your needs will be met and that you'll feel right at home in our church family. Get ready, you will be blessed. Two. One, two. Two. One, two. Okay. Um, a lot of people are, have been asking questions. Who was shown for it? Who was shown? Do you know the song? Sing with me. You were worthy of it all. You were worthy of it all. For from you are all things. To you are all things. That's Sean Foyt. <laughs> he wrote that. He wrote that. You mustn't miss it. Get your ticket. Amen. Okay, we're dedicating these beautiful children this morning. I just want you to give all the parents a big hand. Come on, give them a big hand. No, a big hand. Like really rejoice. <clears throat> You all know what it is like to have a baby, and I know that this mommy had to get up very early to sort this child out, and now he's sleeping. Big moment, and this is what they do. Hey? Um, can we have the camera on him? Oh, there goes the paper. Have we got, there we go. Um, mommy, can you turn slightly like that that the camera catch his beautiful sleeping face? And he, um, is it a girl? Oh, sorry. Apology, because I just saw Grace, and I thought, how can Grace be a boy? <laughs> well, that can happen, eh? That's Grace, just joining the family, very happy with the family. And the next one is Vuyulet, where? Oh, no, say. Vuyulet, I just said the tooth wrong. <laughs> Good morning, darling. Just stand here. Everybody see how gorgeous you are? Isn't she just something? <laughs> Thank you, my boy. Thank you. And then we've got uh, Amanda. Amanda of Amanda? Amanda. Amanda. Hello, Amanda. Just show her, show her to the people. Can you all see her face? They turn around, Daddy. Turn around. We want, no, 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 like this. The camera must be on her. There it goes. Then we can see her face right there on the big screen. Hi, sweetie pie. And then we've got next to her sister Melody. Do you sing? This is Melody. Are you Melody? Look at Melody. Isn't she gorgeous? Do you sing? Do you sing? <laughs> with a song, name like Melody. She's going to sing with Sean. And then we've got right here, May, oh no, wrong one. Okay, this is Milan. And it's also, look at this. Mil, you know, but incidentally, she comes all the way from Italy with a name like Milan. All right? All designed. Look at the shoes. Beautiful Milan. You look gorgeous, my baba. And then we've got uh, Mason right here. So I want to tell you about Mason. This couple have brought up, or she, this mommy, actually brought up about 30 children in her life that's come through her house. And Mason is the latest adopted baby that a mommy didn't want. And yes, Mason. And he looks like his father, actually. This is the, the wonderful thing. He looks like his father. But he's totally spoiled because he's got, he's got all the pleasures of life and he's really such a healthy baby. That's Mason. And then we've got, and then I need to look, oh, this is such a big name. But, oh, man, Eleanor Trickach, oh, so slop. Look at that. She's also sleepy. It's Eleanor Parker. Eleanor Parker van Eerden, you must say it right, very important, Eleanor, mommy stand forward, welcome, she's also sleeping with her little socks on her hands, Don't scr and then we've got Eden right here. He, this is the one we're dedicating. He's been dedicated already. He, and for those of you who know Sharon, Sharon has been in our choir. She's a right-hand lady, and she used to be in our Bible school. This is her grandchild, Eden. Welcome, Eden. He's, he's, this child is really hungry. He's got his hands all. So I just want to say well done to the parents. And, and just for two minutes, I want to explain something. When I think about being a parent, I, I don't take it lightly. Because right here, you've got no idea. Right here, standing in, in the arms of these mommies, it might be the next Pastor Jimmy Crompton. It might be the next president, and hopefully he will not be crooked, never be crooked, because we've got great men of, and women of God bringing up their children. But these children have a vision, and these parents have a vision. And I remember when my little girl died, how I said to somebody one day, it wasn't my child that died, it was a whole vision that died. 
There's a vision for every one of these children. And I really want while the connect leaders are coming and they're going to take them and separate them and pray over them. We just want you to understand that this is not taken lightly because Jesus didn't take it lightly. So we don't take it lightly in this church. Will you just all be, be so kind and just, I want you to stretch your hands out to them and just while they're praying, just speak a blessing. While these people are praying, you speak a blessing as well. Thank you, connect leaders. You may go ahead. If you are wanting to dedicate your baby, please make sure that you fill in a form in the foyer and we will notify you of the next date. Who's praying with you? Why don't you come over this side so the piano isn't in your way? Yeah, go go further, further. Go right past the piano. Okay. I want to show you that Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Mariana bought the babies their very first Bible. So we're going to hand over the Bibles. Just show the Bibles to the camera, please, Gideth. Just show it to the camera. Can you pick it up? That is the child's very first Bible, and it comes from Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Mariana. Thank you. So they will have their first Bibles with a certificate saying that they have been dedicated to the Lord. And while we are waiting, Pastor Jimmy, do you want to pray a general prayer? Then we can just go over. Got a mic. Of course. (laughs) Praise God. Let's all rise, please. Let's all pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, by the authority vested in us as sons and daughters of God, we command a blessing of God on these children that everything that you desire for them will be fulfilled and that they will choose you and your way from an early age and you'll protect them from all harm and danger. And now, Lord, I pray for the parents that they will be godly men and women because, Lord, the children are going to do what they do. They're going to do what they do more than what they say. So I pray that these people will be in church every Sunday, join the cell and serve you with all their heart because, Lord, it's not enough to have faith for a moment. We need to have faith for a lifetime until you fetch us home. Cover these children under the blood and the family. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. And you may be, you may be seated. You may be seated. Okay, we will... Um... Gavin, yes. We will have the trailer for the Unbreakable Marriage playing right now.
Amen. I think you need to be there. It's always good to invest in your marriage because your marriage is very, very important. I have one more announcement and I'm trying to be as quick as I can because I'm very excited. Richard is going to teach on a subject that I have never heard taught on before. I've heard men mention of it, but in the book of Ezekiel, it talks about God and a wheel within a wheel, and I've never heard anybody expound on that. I've heard people mention it, but that's not explaining it. Now, I want to tell you something. Get this very clearly. The Word of God plus the Holy Spirit produces a, a miracle. The Bible says the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Holy Spirit hovered over the, 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 this unformed world uh, and hovered like a dove, like a bird. And I want you to listen to me, but nothing happened. And then the Word came. And when the Word and the Holy Spirit came together, what happened? It said, let there be light, and light was created. We need the Word, you need the Word, and surrender to the Holy Spirit so that you can have a miracle. And I'm, I'm asking God for many miracles in the service this morning. Now, I have one more announcement to make, and I'm going to try and be as quick as I can. But church, these four walls have blocked out the people who need Jesus. We heard a mighty teaching on, on I've sent you as lambs amongst wolves. we got to go and get those wolves and bring them out here and turn them into lambs. And you know what I said to my staff on, on the, uh, um, they were so excited about certain things, and I said, we need to be that excited about bringing somebody to Jesus. I wonder if there's somebody here who came to the Lord and somebody else sitting here helped you to come to the Lord. Somebody put the mark on you and brought you to Jesus. I wonder if there's somebody who will get up and tell me that person's name. Somebody sitting here that caused you to come to Christ. Don't be, please don't be shy. Just call out that name. Honor, honor that person for bringing you to Christ. Anton Erasmus. He's not here, is he? No. Anybody else? I'd love it to be somebody that's in here. Is there anybody else? Who brought you to the Lord? Uh, sorry? Mercia Peters. Amen. Where's Mercia? Is she here? Up there. Amen. Mercia, you put a mark on somebody, they're going to heaven instead of to hell. Did you people hear that? All right, put your video on, please. Put the video on. Here is your opportunity to make an eternal difference in someone's life. Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Monte van der Merwe from Spirit Life Ministries in Utenay. And I want to share some good news with you. And the good news is this, that Jesus Christ has given us a commandment. And there are many, but the one is the Great Commission. And the Great Commission is to go and preach the good news to a dying world. Part of the Great Commission is to raise the dead, heal the sick, and to drive out demons. Amen. That's God's calling upon our lives. And the exciting news is that God's called you and me to go and do it. God needs people. God needs a mouthpiece. He needs hands. He needs eyes. He needs ears. And He needs feet to go and spread the gospel. So as I was pondering on this for my own church, how are we able to go and spread the good news? I believe God gave me a strategy. And the strategy is called Harvest Sunday. And a week later, my daughter Megan came up to me and she just confirmed it. And she said God spoke to her as well. And she added another piece to the strategy and it's called the Mark Campaign. So the strategy is this. 
We are there to encourage everybody to bring somebody to church on Harvest Sunday. And as a church, you will set that date. But we encourage you to go and change somebody's life. So now I want to encourage you to go and find that person. That person could even be your spouse, could even be a child of yours, could even be a work colleague or friend. It doesn't really matter. But that person is waiting for you. I want to encourage you. I want you to think about the person that God put across your path. The person that led you to the Lord. The person that brought you to church. Because that person made a mark on your life. The fact is you will never forget that person. Never. And this is where go and make your mark campaign comes in. Go make your mark on somebody's life. Because that person was the one that influenced you that your life will never be the same again. So that's what the Mark campaign is all about. That person came, was obedient to God, and changed your life for good. So I want to encourage you, go and make your mark on somebody's life. So we did this, and we had one wonderful, awesome, blessed time. I want to give you a bit of statistics on a Harvest Sunday two weeks ago, we had 123 visitors. Isn't that wonderful? But the best part of it was this. We had 43 salvations. Man, we just want to give God all the glory. This past Sunday, we had well over 60, 70 new of those visitors in church. So we know the harvest and the net has been closed. But I want to say this. That person who God's going to lay on your heart, it's not about bringing them to Sunday service. It's about making a disciple. I want you, like that person that came across your path, maybe he had to pursue you. Maybe he had to stick around. Maybe you were resistant, but that person kept on. And they made a mark on your life. I want you to commit to make a mark on somebody's life Go and be a disciple. Make disciples. That's what Jesus requires. Discipleship. Not just hit and miss. So over two weeks, going into the third week, we've had tremendous results. Because everybody that's brought somebody in made sure that they were the first contact on Monday morning. They were the first contact on Tuesday. The first contact to go and pick them up and arrange for them to come into a care group, whatever that may be in your um, church right now. But they made sure that they were there. Made sure they brought him to church. That's what the kingdom is all about. I want to encourage you. It's time for harvest. And it's time for you to go make your mark somebody's life bless amen you. it's time are the ushers ready with the with the pamphlets if you all got them now listen to me very carefully no no guys we haven't got time you've got to do this fast listen to me do you love your your loved ones that are not saved do you love your friends that are not saved do you love your colleagues at work or at school that are not saved or university I challenge you today. I was told that there were going to be pamphlets. What has happened to them? Oh, they put them here on the ground. Oh, uh, ushers, come quickly. Forgive our poor. All the ushers. I need all the ushers. Every one of you, please come quickly. Grab a handful and dish out a pamphlet to every person. Amen. Hallelujah. We need them upstairs as well. Every person here must get get a pamphlet. Hallelujah. Amen. Just pass it out as fast as you can. Hallelujah. This. Amen. I really don't want to take up too much time. You are going to write down... You're going to fill that form in, and I expect every child of God who loves the Lord to fill it in. We have got, that church is smaller than ours, and they had 123. By the way, we've got pens here. Thank you, Madge. Amen. Uh, uh, 
Why don't you come and grab that box of pens? Anybody need a pen? Quickly, please. There are people. Your match next to you, right? Your, the, over that side. Amen. Put your hand up if you need a pen. Put it right up so they can see. Quickly. Amen. Could somebody help you this section? Start at the back row. This is, there's only been one brother working on it. Put your hand up if you need a pen. Put it right up, church. Hold it right up. There's two over here. You need a pen. There's somebody over on the block behind you. Amen. I want you to fill it in and fold it only once. Put it in the, the fish tank. We're going to go fishing for souls. And the Sunday that we're making, Harvest Sunday, is the last Sunday of July. In other words, a month's time. Amen? Are we running out of pamphlets? Take a moment, just... Richard, start coming over so long. I pray that God will make you, challenge you. I'm going to fill this in. You are now to pray for that person. And you to witness to that person and bring them to church. Uh, we're a big church. We didn't have 23 visitors here. They had 123. 43 got saved. 25 have already been baptized in water because that Udenaig, what can come out of Udenaig? Well, we need to do what Udenaig did. Fill it in. You can even, while the word comes out, just put, pop it in. Come, if you've done it, pop it in here. Quickly come and drop it in. I want you to open your heart. Our time has run out. I need to let Richard preach the word. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to encourage you. We, we, our goal, as you can see on the walls, in the fish tank. Um, our goal is to, um, to have 400 connect groups. And um, we have 167 right now, though I think we've got a few more. And we need people to come to PowerPoint this evening at 5 o'clock to get trained so we can open more connect groups. We're running out of connect groups. Okay. Um, the passage I'm going to read, and I'm going to read a... a um, just going to get... Every, let's just get... If you fill it in, come now, because I, 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 when we get to the passage I'm going to read, I need you to, to concentrate. The um, passage is in Ezekiel 1, and it's quite a long passage, but what I need you to do is as you read, as I read the passage, I want you to try and imagine the scene that, that Ezekiel is describing, because this Ezekiel... Ezekiel sees what um, Ezekiel sees sees what's, what what um, he, he really battles for words as he describes the scene. It's just let's just get everybody moving. Praise the Lord. Thank you for all these names. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to start reading from Ezekiel 4 to verse 28. As I looked, I saw a great storm coming from the north, driving before it a huge cloud that flashed with lightning and shone with brilliant light. Is everyone imagining this? You've seen a storm, but the, the cloud is full of light. There was fire inside the cloud, and in the middle of the fire glowed something like gleaming amber. From the center of the cloud came four living beings that looked like human, except that each had four faces and four wings. As I looked, sorry, their, their legs were straight and their feet had hooves like those of a calf and shone like burnished bronze. And each of their four wings, I could see human hands. So each of the four beings had four faces and four wings. The wings of each living being touched the wings of the, the beings beside it. Each one moved straight forward in one direction without turning around. Each had a human face in, in the front, the face of a lion on the right side, the face of an ox on the left, and the face of an eagle at the back. Each had two pairs of outstretched wings, one pair stretched out to touch the wings of the living being on either side of it, and the other covered its body. They went in whatever direction the spirit chose, and they moved straight forward in any direction without turning around. The living beings um, looked like bright coals of fire or brilliant torches, and, and lightning seemed to flash back and forth among them, and the living beings darted to and fro like flashes of lightning. As I looked at these beings, I saw four wheels touching the ground beside them, one wheel belonging to each. The wheels sparkled as if made of beryl. All four wheels looked alike and were made the same. Each wheel had a cr second wheel turning crosswise within it. The beings could move in any of the four directions they faced without turning as they moved. The rims of the four wheels were tall and frightening, and they were covered with eyes all around. And when the living beings moved and the wheels moved with them, when the, they flew upwards, the wheels went up too. The spirit of the living beings were in the wheels, so wherever the spirit went, the wheels and the living beings also went. And when the beings moved, the, the wheels moved. And when the beings stopped, the wheels stopped. And, and the beings flew upwards. Incidentally, the, take note of the wheels stopped. And when the, the beings flew upwards, the wheels rose up, for the spirit of the living beings was in the wheels. Spread out above them was a surface like the sky, glittering like crystal. Beneath the surface, the wings of each, um, let me just see, um, stretched out to touch the other's wings, and, and each had two wings covering its body, and as they flew, their wings sounded to me like crashing against the shore or the voice of a, the Almighty or like the shouting of a mighty army, and when they stopped, they let down their wings. And as they stood with wings lowered, a voice spoke from beyond the crystal surface above them. Above the surface was something that looked like a throne made of, of blue lapalooza. And on the, this throne, high above, was a figure whose appearance resembled a man. From what appeared to be his waist up, he looked like gleaming amber flickering like a, a fire. And from his waist down, he looked like a burning flame shining with splendor. All around him was a glowing halo, like a rainbow shining in clouds on a rainy day. This is what the glory of the Lord looked like to me. Who ye, who ye managed to imagine this straight through? Who ye got halfway and thought, geez, this is more than my brain can... <laughs> if, you, if you read this, it's... <laughs> It, it sounds like um, <coughs> it's the, the thing that, that um, when I read it the first time, I felt like the Ezekiel was, because he was seeing this, and he, it felt like Ezekiel was struggling to describe what he was seeing. In other words, he did a good job, but he was battling for the words to describe this thing that he's seen. Um, I went and read some commentators, and um, 
there are theories that maybe Ezekiel was having some sort of epileptic fit, and there's even people that apparently the prevailing view is that um, Ezekiel saw a UFO. But we need to take Ezekiel very, very seriously for a few reasons. First of all, Jesus quoted Ezekiel more than any other prophet. Secondly, what did Jesus call himself? Son of man. What did Ezekiel call himself? Son of man. Thirdly, Ezekiel and Daniel have the most predictions in any book of the Bible. So far, 75% of all of Ezekiel's predictions have come to pass. 25% have still come to pass. Why? Because they're still in our future. So a guy with a 75% or 100% um, record of being perfectly correct to date is someone that we need to take very, very seriously. Don't you agree? So, uh, in, in, just as a matter of interest, in the Bible there are 735 predictions of events and 593 of those events have already taken place, which is an 81% accuracy rate to date. And time hasn't finished and a lot of the, a lot of the, the remaining pr- predictions are about what's still to come, how the world ends. So that the Bible predicts that the world ends means that the world ends. So this is an incredibly accurate, the, the Bible is an incredibly accurate collection of, of different authors making incredibly accurate predictions. And Ezekiel specifically is someone that we should take very seriously. So when he describes this vision, we need to take this vision very seriously. And when I read it first, I went to my dad and I said, well, what do you think this all is? And he said, I have no idea. And I don't blame him because when I read it, I had no idea either. But um, I, think, I think the key here is, is this, the last sentence. This is what the glory of the Lord looked like to me. So his description of the glory of the Lord with his words is what I've just read to you. So that's what the glory of the Lord looks like. So before, let's start with the glory of the Lord. Now, what happened is, there, there was the Ark of the Covenant, there was this, this box, this golden box, and there were cherubim on the box, and in between the box, there used to be, no one knows where the Ark is now, not even Indiana Jones, and, and In between the two cherubim, God used to literally manifest his glory. So where, where should we start? If this is what the glory of the Lord looks like, let's go and look like, look at what the glory of the Lord does. And the best example of this, this is that the ark was captured by the Philistines and they put it in the temple of Dagon and seven times or however many times Dagon fell face forward before the glory of the Lord. And so they put it on, they, they put the, 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 the ark on a wagon and they sent the wagon and the wagon went off to Israel and when it got close to Israel they opened the lid and 70 people died. From looking inside the ark. And then it sat there for 20 years. They put it in a place and they they left it there. And eventually David decided it was time to bring the ark back to its rightful place in Jerusalem. And so he went down and he took an ox cart and he put the, the, he put the, the, um, ark on the, on the ox cart and they headed off to Jerusalem and the ox stumbled and the ark just about fell off and one of the guys who had been looking after the ark for 20 years put his hand up to steady it and God killed him. And God got really, really upset. I mean, David got really, really upset 
and he took her to an ungodly guy, guy called um, Obed Edom, who was an ungodly guy, servant of Edom, another nation. He lived in Gath, the city of the Philistines, and and David parked the ark in an un, in a, the house of someone ungodly in an ungodly city, and he and he marched off in a hump. And he thought, well. If that's what God's going to do, I'm leaving him there. And he marched off in a big sulk and he went back to Jerusalem. But here's the problem, and I'm going to read you the scriptures. This, is, this is the, was the problem for David. So this, David decided not to move the ark of the Lord into the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom of Gath. The ark of the Lord remained there in Obed-Edom's house, for three months, and the Lord blessed Obed Edom and his entire household. So here's this ungodly guy, and he becomes incredibly wealthy. All his children and, he, and his servants are blessed. And so, guess what David does? He comes and fetches the ark. <laughs> it's like, I am not missing out on that blessing. You see, because where the glory of the Lord manifests and is respected, everybody gets blessed. Incredibly, inexplicably blessed. And David wasn't going to allow some ungodly heathen, some ungodly heathen to get that blessing. He was going to come and fetch it for himself. And so... It says the ark of God remained there in Obed Edom's house for three months, and the Lord blessed the household of Edom and everything he owned. So then I want to show you something. So, so David comes and he fetches the ark, and I've preached about how there has to be a shout when the glory of the Lord moves and the ark moves. And so they carried the ark up to, up to Jerusalem. But look here. So the Levites appointed Henan, son of Joel, uh, along with his fellow Levites, Asaph, son of Bekiah, and Ethan, son of Cushiah. Basically, what we're talking about here is the praise and worship team at the temple. The following men were chosen as their assistants, Zechariah, Jaziel, we skip, 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 second last name, and the gatekeepers, Obed Edom. Here's an ungodly heathen. Suddenly he's a gatekeeper at the temple. He's like, I'm not, stay, I'm, the, I'm not sitting here in Gath when the presence, the glory of the Lord is in Jerusalem. I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm following it. I don't care if I don't come from the right family or have the right ancestry. Nothing is going to stop me. From being near the glory of God, being with the glory of God. It worked for me so well in Gath, how much more in Jerusalem. And then again, met yeah, Elephilu, Mikaniah, Obed Edom, Jael and Aziz were cho chosen to play the liars. So he was a gatekeeper and he joined the praise and worship team at the temple. This ungodly heathen. And they shouldn't really have appointed him because he didn't come from the right place. But his determination to follow the glory of the Lord made, him, made everybody else stop. Yes, okay, we hear you, Obed Edom. He's like, I'm not going anywhere. I need the glory of the Lord. Look what it did to my house. Look at what it did to my family. Look, look what it did to my wife and my children. I am not missing out. I am going to do everything I can to be with the glory of the Lord. So, if, if, <coughs> so then the glory of the Lord is something that if cor correctly cared for and respected, literally the can turn your life around completely and totally. Completely and totally. 
We all need to be like Obed-Edom. I'm going to c- clean the toilets. I'm going to pray, play in the present worship team. I'm going to be a connect group leader. I'm, ga- I'm going to pray whatever I can to get into the glory of the Lord. All of us can experience the glory of the Lord, and I'm going to show you how you can experience the glory of the Lord. Every single one of you can turn into an Obed-Edom. Every single one of you can have the glory of the Lord manifest in your life. If you're sick, you can be healed. If you're in debt, that debt can be paid for. If you have um, family members that are unsaved and, and, and there's brokenness in your life, or you can, it can be tra- changed and transformed. Every single one of you can be like Obed-Edom. So let's go back now. Remember I read you that thing and you know, all of you lost track and you're like, what the heck? I'm going to break it up into three pieces. The first is, let's start with the, at the beginning. This is Lapalooza. Lazuli. Lapalazuli. And this is what, isn't that beautiful? That's a stone. And that was what the throne that God sat on, the, the seat of the throne, was made of. Said it was like this. And it can be, do you see those little lines there, especially on the top one? It can be speckled with gold through it. It's beautiful, beautiful stone. So that's the first element is the seat upon which the, 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 upon which God sat on. Then the next part, and this is about the best drawing I could find, because, I mean, how do, you, how do you draw that? You know? Four-faced being. But there are four aspects. The lion, the face of the lion, which represents God's royalty and power, Secondly, the ox that represents God's humility. And thirdly, man that represents God's, um, that represents that God became a man. And fourthly, the eagle that represents God's um, divinity. And um, the, the 12 tribes of Israel used to break up into three tribes each and gather under each of, each had a banner. One was the lion, Judah, and those tribes the ox, the man, and the eagle. And that also represents that all creation recognizes the glory of the Lord. The third one is this, the wheel within the wheel. Now, I have no idea if it looked anything like this, but it's maybe a good drawing of what it is. So we've got a seat, we've got four beings, and we've got four wheels within wheels. Now, what did, what did, and, and this, this is, this to me really unlocked the passage, is a, we had, remember we had Randy Delp? And he said, this looks, I asked him what he thought it meant, and he said, he says, I think it, it could be a throne. And so it says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. What did, what did Ezekiel say? He said, this is what the glory of the Lord looks like to me. So, we see a seat, and we see, so this is the glorious throne. This is where God sits on. He has a throne. And I'm going to show you an amazing scripture that I came across early, I think it was last week. I watched as thrones were put in place, and the ancient one, this is this is God the Father, sat down to judge. His clothing was as white as snow and his hair like purest wool. He sat on a fiery throne, remember Ezekiel, with wheels of blazing fire. So we have a seat. We have four beings that are the four legs of the throne on wheels. 
Do you see that? Seat, legs, and each, what, what was under each of the beings? Wheels within wheels. So we have a glorious throne. We have a seat. We have legs. And so literally, God's throne is on wheels. Are you picturing that? Literally, God's throne is on wheels. So he sits on a throne with four legs, four beings, and each of them has a wheel under them that can go wherever you can go. So what it tells us is that God's throne is mobile. So let's go back, because remember, what did, what did Ezekiel say? He said, this is what the glory of the Lord looked like to me. So when I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, they sang blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. So creation is literally bowing down to the one who sits on the throne. So if God has a glorious throne, his glory manifests where he rules. So if you want to see the glory of the Lord manifest, then he needs to rule. He needs to be in charge in that place. If you want to see the glory of the Lord Remember Obed-Edom? The reason the glory of the Lord manifested in Obed-Edom's house is when the glory arrived, he allowed it to rule. So, the glory of God manifests where God rules. If we want to see the glory of God, then God has to rule. If we want to see the glory of the of God manifest in our congregation, then God has to rule. If we want to see the glory of God manifest in our houses, in our homes, in our families, in our finances, then God has to rule because his glory only manifests where he is in charge. Why? Because what does a throne speak of? It speaks of authority. you a, only a king has a, a throne, and the reason a king has a throne is to show that he is in charge. Um, I think it was Pastor Jimmy who was talking, who was, I heard someone talking about, oh, I think it was Pastor Poncho, about how they briefed, uh, someone had to go see a king, and they spent over an hour briefing him on how to go and see the king, and he saw the king for five minutes. And the reason why is because the king sat on his throne. And one of the instructions was, you can't go up to the throne. He can only come down to you. So where, where a king is in charge, he sits on his throne. And the reason he sits on his throne is it signifies he is completely in charge. So then why, does God's, why is God's throne on wheels? Now let me ask you, what was on those wheels? Eyes. They were fiery, but they were eyes. The wheels were covered with eyes. And so it says, the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those who hearts, whose hearts are fully committed to him. And so God, the reason God's throne is on wheels with eyes is that he is going back and forth over the earth looking for people and places where he rules. And when he does, he parks his throne there the throne stops and the glory of God manifests. Amen. 
God wants to manifest his glory in your life. If God's, is, if, if God's glory is not manifesting in your life, then it's because you're not wholly committed to him. I was, I, um, I, the Lord actually gave me this last Monday, yes, last Monday, or the previous Monday, and um, I had misjudged how much work I had to do, came home from Sunday night service, ended up going to bed at quarter to three, and I had to get up at quarter past six to take the boys to school. And I sat down in my chair at about 8 o'clock, and the Lord just, and I, oh, I'd read that scripture from Daniel. And there was a big case that's, that, that I was, had been given, and a, a lucrative case, and I was going to, a lot of work. And then they phoned me a few days later, this is before that Monday, and I, and I said, um, and they said, no, they've made it, they've change their mind, there's a cheaper way of doing it, they're going to do it, that. And when I realized that the glory of the Lord manifests on those who are holy, whose hearts are fully committed to Him, I prayed and I said, Father, I commit my life to You. I'm fully committed to You. I commit my family. I commit my finances. I commit my bank account. I commit my ministry, I commit every area of my life. And I looked up and within two minutes they phoned me back and said, oh, they've changed their mind. And so what I'm calling on you to do is if you want to see the glory of the Lord, if you want God to park his throne over your life, you need to commit every aspect and part of your life to Him. If you do that, the glory of the Lord will start to manifest in your life, just like Obed-Edom. Let's just quickly look at some scriptures. So the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and His ears are open to their prayers, but the Lord turns His face against those who do evil. Another one, but the Lord is in His start. In his holy temple, the Lord still rules from heaven. He watches everyone closely, examining every person on earth. The Lord examines both the righteous and the wicked. He hates those who love violence. He, he, he will run down blazing coals. He'll rain down blazing coals and burning sulfur on the wicked, punishing them with scorching winds, for the righteous Lord loves justice. The virtuous will see his face. The Lord is calling you to commit your life fully, completely, and totally to Him. The Lord wants to park His throne over your life, over your health. It says, righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne, and failing love and truth walk before you as attendants. Happy are those who hear the joyful call to worship, for they will walk in the light of your presence, O Lord. Where, there's, where God parks his, his throne over a city, as we saw in Juarez Ciudad, because if there was ever a man that was committed to Jesus, it's Pastor Poncho Magia. When God parks his throne over a country, things transform. We need to see the glory of God. I actually saw, I was, after I finished preparing late last night, I switched on Tomorrow Never Dies, and it's a James Bond video, movie. And um, the, the chief villain's chief sidekick's name was Robert Gupta. <laughs> it was made in 1997. If only we had listened to their warning. <laughs> but since we had those massive prayer meetings with Angus Buchan, and since we've, we've started to pray, 
our country who, that was heading down on the drain very quickly has totally is transforming and so many good things have happened. The Guptas are on the run. Jacob Zuma is locked up in endless litigation. If only he'd become a lawyer. And so many good things are happening. But the reason is because people started to commit our country wholly to him. We have to, if we want the, the throne of glory to be parked in our finances, in our lives, in our circumstances, in our families, in our education, in our congregation, in our connect group, whatever it is, we need to make sure that we are wholly committed to him. Because his eyes on, his, on the wheels of his throne are going back and forth across the earth, looking to see where he can stop. Can he stop in your life? Does he want to stop in your life? Does God want to stop in your life and transform your life? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and I'm going to ask you to pray, pray prayers of repentance in areas where, where, and I'm going to ask the glory of the Lord to start to manifest in this congregation. And if there are areas where, if the, if the areas where you, 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 that, that haven't been totally committed to him, the Holy Spirit's going to start to speak to you. It's, don't start playing yet. The glory of the Lord wants to manifest in your life. He wants to manifest in this building, in this congregation. Are there areas in your life that are, are holy, not wholly committed to him? Is your life not wholly committed to him? Are there things in your life that are not wholly committed to him? The Holy Spirit is calling you to get rid of them so that God can park his throne of glory in your life. Dio dio bobo di araba saraba bambogo di araba banda araba banda the places that you haven't trusted god where you've relied on your own strength your own understanding di araba banda araba sarabi di erogo di obo subobondo robobondo robobono robobondi robobondi araba manda araba have you fallen into fear of finances Lord, we, as a congregation, we ask you to commit fully. We, we ask you to help us to, to, to be fully committed to you. I pray, Lord, that as your throne traverses the earth, that they will, you will see our lives and see this congregation, Father, and that... Lord, that you're going to park your throne, that you're going to stop your throne over this congregation, over my life, over my family's life, over, over my, my connect group and my generation. Father, we ask you to help us to be fully committed to you, Jesus. Lord, it's not for us that we do this, but we do it for you. We want your presence, your glory, your glory, your glory, your glory. Let it manifest here today. Rabbanda, rabbanda, rabbanda. Yendi di orobobondi, orobobondo. Yarabanda, rabbanda, rabbanda. Park your throne. Start to ask God to park his throne over you. Park your throne in my life, Jesus. Park your throne in my marriage. Park your throne, Father God, in my, in my family. Park your throne in my job, my business, whatever I do. Park your throne in my bank account. Park, let your glory, 
Let your glory, whatever is fully committed to you, Lord, let your glory fill our homes, our homes. Let your glory fill our, this church building, this congregation. Let the glory of the Lord fill the congregations around the, uh, the city and the, the other churches, Lord. Help us to, as a city, to be fully committed to you, Father God. Help us not to this to be an idle prayer, but Jesus, that your your presence, your glory will fill our church, our city, and our country. We commit our, our country to you, Lord. Let your glory fill our country, Father God, where there's hate and and, and distrust and anger and hurt, Father God. Let your glory park in those areas. If we have issues about race, Father God, let your glory, we commit those to you. Let your glory fill our, our, our hearts, Father God. If there's, if there's whatever area, Lord Jesus, let your glory fill it. Full, uh, we commit our lives to you, Jesus. Let your glory fill this house. Let your glory fill our hearts, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. I'm going to give you an opportunity. If you've never given your life to Jesus, you didn't know that if you come into come into relationship with him you didn't know that his glory could be literally be parked in your house in your life in your finances that this glory can transform you please raise your hand and say gee i need to come into a relationship with jesus so we can pray for you and help you i see that hand who else who else, Lord, Ben the Arabanda, that's fully committed to Him? Raise your hand so we can pray for you. Let the glory manifest in your life. Let the glory touch you. Let the glory change you. Ben the Arabasarababanda, Ben the Arabanda, Arabanda. Pray in the heavenly language as as the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit gives you words. It's what we're doing. We're praying in tongues. Pray. Rabbanda. Raise your hand. Who else is here? That the, I see that hand. Who else? Gonna, thank you, Jesus. Please raise your hand so we can pray for you. Hallelujah. 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 Rabbanda. 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 We give you glory. We, you, you, you alone have the glory, Father God. You alone have the glory. You alone have the glory. You alone, you alone. Let's everyone stand up. Thank you. Let's keep praising the Lord. If you raised your hand, please can you come and stand here in front so we can pray for you. If you raised your hand, we want to help you to receive the glory of the Lord. Stand here and face me. Face me. Turn around. There we go. Thank you. Hallelujah, can we have altar workers? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
I stand as a testimony. See, 18 year old, I surrendered everything to God. And for 58 years, God's Spirit has never left me. And I've seen favor and blessing way beyond what I ever thought was possible. But you know what? I had to come to a point of surrender and then I needed to stay surrendered. No good to be surrendered for a day. We go back to the, to the unbelief and the unsurrender. And so you need, you, by walking out here, you declared publicly that you're surrendering, that you want the throne, the rule of God in your life. And I'm so excited about that. And I want to tell you, the blood of Jesus cleanses you from every wrong act, thought or deed you ever did. And God said he can't remember it anymore. But now he wants you to go on with God. You need to first of all believe that the blood of Jesus has been poured out. It's for, he's forgiven you. Secondly, you need to become part of this church and a, a small group where you can be cared for. Because it's no good to commit. For, it's like getting married. I didn't get I married for 49 years. I didn't stop being married. I stayed married because I'd made a covenant. I would like you to pray with me just a very simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you that you died on the cross in my place so I could have your eternal life. I receive forgiveness by the blood of Jesus right now and a new life. And I'm going to serve you by your grace and with the help of other godly people. Amen. You know what? The Lord has just forgiven you of your sin. He's blotted it out. It's mind-blowing. Think every wrong deed I ever did is gone. Now we're going to take you into a prayer room where we can pray for you privately instead of in front of everybody and I want you to join this church joining the church doesn't save you we help you to trust the Lord your trust saves you your commitment saves you would you just lead them would you just go with these people give the Lord a big hand come on these men are going to go to heaven one day because of the gospel. Give the Lord another hand. Amen. I challenge you, I charge you to serve the Lord. I don't want to have to beg you to church. I don't want to fill benches because I begged you. Yeah, I want you to serve God because Jesus is the most important thing in your life. You need to join a cell and be there every week. You need to get into this church every week. Not because church saves you. Church helps you to stay in commitment. You can't run off with another woman or another man after 20 years and say, well, I was married 20 years. My friend, when you get committed to Jesus, it's got a last. I, it's no good my saying 58 years ago I got filled. Now tonight we're going to teach you how to hear God. At five, at seven, we're going to teach you how to overcome your financial problems. And you need to get into a cell. I command you to get into a cell. I challenge you to get involved. And then uh, 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 I need, we're going to pray. Nobody must move these tanks. They stay right here until the 28th. We'll pray over them. If you haven't put your form in yet, put it in now. And in the name of Jesus Christ, who you claim to serve, I charge you to bring somebody. If you can't bring them kicking and screaming, and you've really tried, God will see that. Amen? But you must really try. Father, everybody, let's pray. I, I feel like I sat there and said, Lord, help me. I'm, I've, I've been committed for all these years, but I want my commitment to grow. And I want the, I want the, I want the, the throne of God 
to roll over my life and stay there. I want the blessing of God. I want the glory of God. Come on church. Come on. No time for backsliding. Now's the time to serve the Lord. Would everybody raise your hand and pray in unison together? Everybody repeat this. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it out loud, please. Lord Jesus, help us. Help me. Help this church to serve you with all of our heart and mind. Let the glory come on my life that I might be a testimony of your love and goodness. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That is an amazing word.